Almighty God, we give you all the praise. Lift your hands and give him praise. Give him praise like you know your life will never be the same. Give him praise like you know tonight is your night. Everywhere across this auditorium, all of the overflows, those connecting online, viewing from across the nations of the world, give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. For the things you have done, for the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name. For the things you have done, and the battles you have won, only you are worthy of my praise. I magnify your name for the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. Wave your hands to Jesus and magnify him. Tell him thank you. Thank him in advance because you will never be the same. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. If someone giving quality thanks, thank you Jesus. Thank you for the testimonies. For his marvelous hand upon our lives. This is but the finger of God for the revival fire blazing across our territories and the nations of the earth. The spectacular display of his power and his wisdom. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. And for tonight, can you cry out your heart, Lord, do not leave me the way I came. Someone pray. Someone pray. Let me not go back the way I came. Take away the burdens. Give me direction. Give me an encounter with your power. Let something from heaven rest upon my life, upon my destiny. Set my ministry on fire change my story give me a turn around tonight someone is praying let there be healing over my body bring to end every long-standing issue let every age-long captivity bow to the name of jesus take away fear and unbelief from my life someone is praying let me enjoy the liberty that comes with your spirit tonight In the name of Jesus Christ. I can assure you and I know by the spirit tonight that someone's change of story is finally here. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every day cannot be the same in a man's life. There are, there are certain moments where you encounter the power and the grace of God and it will turn your life around. May this day be that day. The morning that the man at the pool, Bethesda, I'm sure he woke up that morning thinking it would be like every other day, not knowing that was the last time he would lie down there. You woke up this morning believing it may be every other miracle service. But let me prophesy to you. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. May tonight be a spectacular night for you. May tonight be a spectacular night for you.
Hallelujah. Why do we come to God? We'll sit down shortly, but why do we really come to God to encounter him like this? Number one, because we love him. But number two, because we know he is the only one who has the answers we are looking for. Let no man deceive you. Except God gives you, no man can give it to you. And I announce to you that this God is very benevolent and he will give you all things richly tonight. For someone, God will arise this night and end circles in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. For someone who have been saying, God, where are you? You are about to hear him answer you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. That after this service, everything around you will let you know he came to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And every power in existence that will not let you receive from God, we curse it in advance tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. So please, I'd like you to be full of faith and expectation. It doesn't matter where you are seated, whether you are in any of the overflows, outside, by the roadside, following from any part of the world. Be intentional. Don't waste your time. You have come to God. Are we together? You have come to him to receive. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh unto him must believe that he exists and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. You won't go back the same. There must be a change of story. And God will visit you in a way that even before you announce it, people will know something has changed in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a way God can visit you. The Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it was not them that were doing the speaking. The Bible says, the heathen said, the Lord has done great things for them. May God visit you in a way that is your enemies that will testify. And for someone tonight, weep not, your crying comes to an end. In the name of Jesus, your crying comes to an end. For another person, the mockery comes to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone will know tonight that it pays to serve Jesus. I was very touched listening to the testimonies. And you can imagine the gentleman, the footballer, just crying and do you know what it means for people to once laugh at you and then see the other side of God's goodness? May that be your testimony this night. Listen, if you didn't come here to receive, go home because for as long as you came here tonight, in the name of Jesus, the giver of all good things, is ensuring that something must land upon your life. Hallelujah. If you don't want to smell smoke, don't have anything to do with the kitchen. But for as long as you find yourself there, there must be something from heaven. In the name of Jesus, may it be clear that you met God tonight. So let hope, let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Let your faith arise tonight. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. One more time with faith in your spirit. Let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. In the name of Jesus. I welcome you to that service where your life must change in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God 
I know what God told me before I left home to come here. I assure you not one jot of his speakings will, will be missing from your life. I'm prophesying to you in the name of Jesus Christ. As he has said it, he will do it. As he has said it, he will do it. As he has said it, he will do it. Please be seated for a few minutes with your faith still alive, with your heart still expectant, no gisting, no discussion, your eyes on Jesus, your heart angry at your situation, ready to insist that it must change. In the name of Jesus Christ. Miracle services are moments where we have the opportunity to experience the spectacular power of God in the midst of his people every service is a miracle service but there are times designated according to god's program where he visits men and we're glad that tonight is that night in the name of jesus now as usual we will pray for the sick minister deliverance to the oppressed but the focus tonight there are two major areas of focus tonight as God gave me in the place of prayer. Number one, this night is your finances. Number two is the greatness, the glory upon your life and destiny. My, my assignment tonight is to deal with these areas to make sure that except God be God. Believe me, please help those under the anointing. Believe me, if God be God, something will shift in these areas in your life tonight that will surprise you. Please believe it, oh. Please believe it. I believe in results. I absolutely believe in results. Results have the power to convince. Results have the power to change the mindset of people. Results have the power to reveal. I wrote something about results here before we get into one scripture or the other and then we allow God to open fire in this place tonight that things have to change in our lives for sure every time Jesus saw the absence of results he caused that process including the tree when he saw that the tree had green leaves but did not have fix he cursed it and said let no man eat of you again god is a god of results i have taught us here that our results bring glory to the name of the lord in as much as the ultimate of our pursuit the reason why we seek god and we desire encounters with him is primarily because we love him but let me tell you this, no man should deceive you. If your life becomes indefinitely barren of results, you will be frustrated. Is that true? Results mean desired expectations. Results mean solutions to problems. Result means outcomes of an expectation. Results talk about consequences. Results talk about the effect that you are expecting. But the two um, expressions that I love is desired expectations and solutions. We all have expectations in our lives. Expectations that range from healings to supernatural interventions to supernatural provisions. To advancement and enlargement in life restoration and God is able to make those desires come to pass according to Mark chapter 11 and verse 40, 40 um, verse 24 Mark 11 24 Jesus was speaking and he said therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire he says you shall have them no matter what it is that you desire God is able to give men the desires of their hearts whatsoever things ye desire you shall have them and as we have learned here the agency 
that sponsors the actualization of desires please pay attention this will be the foundation of building for building your faith tonight the agency that sponsors the actualization of every desire is the power of God without the power of God desires will remain dreams without the power of God desires will remain wishes it takes the power of God to translate desires from the realm of wishes expectations to the realm of their manifestation God finds joy when believers see his hand or when his creation really but more importantly believers God finds joy when believers experience his hand his goodness his power the Bible lets us know that every time there is a manifestation of the power of God there will always be joy joy is the result of the experiencing the outstretched arm of God according to Acts chapter 8 from verse I think 7 now or 8 when Philip preached Christ the Bible says they they gave heed hearing and seeing the things that he did verse 8 the Bible says and the people with one accord go to verse 8 there was great joy in that city there can be great joy in your life great joy in your destiny great joy in your family to the degree that there is a performance a manifestation of your expectation hallelujah even the bible says that when hope is deferred it can make the heart weary i wrote something down here everything god says and desires for the believer has a requisite level of empowerment to make it happen everything God says should happen to your life everything God says would happen to your life is not just dependent on his speaking is dependent on your accessing the requisite level of power that brings it to manifestation hallelujah now in this part of the world there are times where the power holding company or maybe your generator can it can bring light but the voltage can be too low to power certain gadgets is that true and so you find out that there is light but the gadgets that require lesser voltage they may come up but certain heavy duty gadgets may not be able to come up because there is a greater level of power required there are certain things in your life that will require higher levels of the power of God to be made manifest are we together so everything God says and desires for the believer has a requisite level of empowerment for it to happen the power of God works like money currency if you have a hundred naira a hundred naira might be able to buy you a bottle of water a hundred naira might be able to buy you something small or let's say a thousand naira might be able to buy you a bottle of water but a thousand naira might not be able to buy you a car a thousand naira might not be able to pay for a house rent or buy you a house so if it is a house you are looking for or a car you are looking for in this example you will need multiples of that amount to match the amount that can buy you that house it is true that every house you are looking for is available or can be built depending on the amount of financial empowerment in this example those there are people in our world who are called very wealthy people why are they wealthy they are wealthy first because of their mindset and they are wealthy because of their understanding of the laws and the systems that govern finances but more importantly pragmatically speaking they are wealthy because they have the financial wherewithal is that true to be able to afford living the kind and the level of life that suits them and so a man can decide for instance that he wants to build a house in his village he wants to decide or he can decide that he wants to buy a house in Europe buy a house in America and at the instance of his decision if he has the requisite level of financial empowerment 
that man can go and pick it up in this example i'm giving but there's someone who may look and say i desire a greater house say i'm staying in a two-bedroom flat i desire to move to say a four-bedroom flat to afford greater comfort you know and stability for my family that person has the desire and the house he wants to move to is there but the financial requirement to promote that person from where he is to the place of desire is not there man of god you are trusting god for increase increase in revelation increase in impact increase in membership the desire is there and that possibility is there the word of god tells us that that possibility is there however do you have the empowerment enough to produce that outcome apostle i desire for men to favor me men to stand like the gentleman who just spoke one person at the field meeting one destiny helper and his life changed he's found himself now in europe playing and being paid in foreign currencies is what god can do but the requisite level of power do not downplay the ministry of power it is what sponsors the actualization of all desires all desires all desires with no exception if you meet some of the wealthy people today in our nation extremely wealthy people um, they can sit down and discuss that we want to build a house for someone and get architects and say in two months or in three months or in four months i want this house built and while they are talking the architects listen to them because they know that there are no limitations the intellectual power is already there and the financial wherewithal is there there should be no limitation whatsoever can i tell you it's dangerous and frustrating to know what should be but not have the power to make it happen I know my life should change but the power to make it happen is not there i know destiny helpers can come to me but the power to make it happen is not there i know i can be free from the influence of this wicked spirit that keep programming bad luck to my life but the power is not there tonight god has come to place power upon your desire in the name of jesus christ back to my example so if I meet a gentleman who now says I want to build a house maybe for my parents I love them I have the desire I have even gone as far as meeting an architect here is the plan I even have gone as far as having a land a plot of land or some plots of land but it's just the financial empowerment in this example imagine that a man looks at that gentleman and signs him a check or does him a transfer of 50 million naira right there and then what has he given him the ability to turn his dreams to reality now that gentleman can rejoice a few minutes ago he was stranded a few minutes at the instance of a transfer from a wealthy man remember the transfer has to be from the person who has it the transfer cannot be from the person who does not have it from the person who has it to the person who needs it and then that man will receive it and call the architects and by the very next day they start digging and building within a few months you see a beautiful structure at the instance of empowerment whatever is stopping you from going forward whatever is making you keep repeating prayer requests you write again you write again you write again may the power of the holy spirit bring that issue to an end now In the name of Jesus Christ please sit down again in this side of the world we experience sadly periodic blackouts is that true whether your gadget is new or not once there is no power it is as good as dead your fridge your electronics all other gadgets are at the mercy of the power that flows to the voltage required so there are times 
that people can go 24 hours sadly sometimes 48 hours and there's no blink of light except you have an alternative system and sometimes if you have a generator and your generator is small you have to off certain things to allow it stand is that true the size and the voltage matters so if you want a generator that can power everything in your house you get some technician to calculate for you the total voltage needed and then you go and get a generator that is by far more than the voltage now you can own everything and run the generator from morning till night there are times you own a generator that can only take one television you add any other thing it will shout outside and stop are we together and yet in the midst of that darkness there are people and their homes that have never had light blink once in this city in this nation there are regions that have never seen a blackout in fact there are children that if there is a ever a blackout they will run away because they wonder what suddenly happened within the same region there was light in goshen and there was darkness in egypt The difference is power. The difference is power. Everything God says and everything God desires for the believer has a requisite level of power or empowerment to make it happen. I define here the power of God as an ability that causes you to get results. The power of God is the ability that causes you to get results the the ability that translates dreams and desires to their manifestation this is very important you cannot imagine what happens in your life where certain dimensions of God's power comes upon you and their possibilities begin to manifest in your life the bible says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven i believe in results i truly believe in results as consolations to our christian experience i have taught you here about loving jesus and giving him everything and loving him beyond things and that remains true but let me tell you something nobody will be indefinitely committed to anything and anyone without an advantage that you derive from that person is that true yes sir even for our relationship with Jesus Christ he didn't just give us this illusion you just serve me and continue there are benefits the psalmist said bless the Lord oh my soul help me please and forget not his benefits there are benefits I know you love Nigeria I know you love the government but when you go to work at the end of the month you you don't no matter what it's not just thank you your boss will tell you there is a salary that is a measure of your value or the at, at least the ability of the corporation to reward you and then they give you something you go back rejoicing there are preachers who go to preach we go to preach because we love Jesus but at the end of it people will package something small and say thank you for coming there are consolations and there are benefits to serving and knowing God and if you have not received yours it must land on you this night in the name of Jesus Christ apostle I love God for who he is congratulations that's a good foundation but a foundation alone does not produce a house you need a foundation and a proper building people sometimes don't even see the foundation you can't renovate a foundation a foundation remains strong there but you need to build something on it people will not live on the foundation is the building people need to see tokens consolations to your Christian experience I'm getting your spirit fired up to be angry with your current level so that when we arise to pray you must cry like Jabez and say Lord change my story nothing will change for as long as you forbear with your current level everybody shout results shout it again shout results 
one genuine result in the Bible one genuine result in Acts chapter 3 they saw the man at gate beautiful and Peter said silver and gold I do not have but such as I have give I unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth rise up and walk the Bible says the man got up and walked in Acts chapter 4 they had to summon them because the ripple effect of that result he went all over the town and they called them and when the man went Peter went with his testimony standing by him and while he was speaking the result was there shout it again say result your evangelism is powerful if your result is standing with you your advancement is powerful if your result is standing with you and now well I went to I, I prayed preparing for this miracle service I always will pray and ask the Lord for the area of focus I don't just want to carelessly come and waste your time you know I've told you I love you and I honor you and I respect you too much to just arrive and come and say let's pray no I must pray and say Lord what do you desire for your people to have because his power goes where his word goes so if you don't find out where his word is going you cannot find where his power is and the Lord told me specifically these two areas first Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 12 someone's life is about to change read it as loud as you can ready one to read both riches and honor come from you and thou reignest over all and in thy hand is power and might in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength to all where does riches and honor come from can I tell you it is possible to have riches and not have honor what does it mean to have honor to have honor means to be regarded and to be rewarded to match your true worth if honor is not at work in your life you will be underestimated and undervalued are we together the perception that people have about you will not match the true perception because Solomon had honor when the Queen of Sheba came to him and she saw everything she said half of this was not told me keep that scripture there please 29 12 both riches and honor come from you and thou reignest over them it says in your hand is power and might how many of you believe in prosperity don't feel bad if you don't believe that's all right how many of you believe it is the will of God to prosper you how many of you believe you can do more for the kingdom in the presence of abundance even though some of you the way you are you will backslide when God blesses you but that's why you are in church we are here to help you but how many of you believe in all fairness that many issues in your life will come to a, a, a an end with full stop in front of it when God solves your problem financially how many of you agree that most of what you have written in your prayer request now is largely finances How many of you are honest and will not lie? <laughs> you see, Ba, my dear people, listen to me. This issue of finance, no matter what else goes forward in your life, if you are down financially, I assure you by the God of heaven, you will be limited in a way that will annoy you forever. Are we together now every time we talk about finances I, I I've told you this that there are two schools of thoughts there are people who are just carnally minded and their their entire scope the scope of their idea about finances is just fueling the lust of the flesh no this is not what we are teaching we are people of intention and mission we know that every time God places resources in your hands it provides the platform for the betterment of your own life and the advancement of your king the, his kingdom we've taken our time to discuss that 
it is important for you to know the role that the presence and the availability of financial resources can bring to your life there are needless troubles there are needless battles there are needless health concerns there are some of you we keep praying for you all the time because it's not a medical condition what is happening to your health is a reaction of something not all right with your finances I vowed a vow before God I've taught you here that I will never never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and then they lack the resources to be able to help them make progress I believe in influence I believe in God coming through for his people I know what it means to be in a state of limitation compromise is easy when you are in the presence of financial limitation let me repeat compromise is very easy when there's financial limitation in your life there are preachers bleeding and crying today simply because of financial resources there are many people who are even more anointed than the Joshua Selman's greater across but the financial resources that will help them amplify what God has given them is not there there are books that people have within their spirit that can bring revelation to the body of Christ and help us solve areas of ignorance in our spiritual work, but simply because they are limited. You've heard me say the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes financial resources to lift it up. It takes more than desire. If you must lift up the name of Jesus to the nations, Don't let anyone bring you to a point where you downplay the importance of being empowered financially. Believe me, you may act, pretend. Some of you, the reason why the teaching on finances or teachings, miracle services like this, a call to receive this empowerment, it doesn't mean much to you. It's because someone else is giving you from his harvest. You've not been exposed to seeing what a harvest or a lack of harvest from your carelessness of not sowing if somebody can bring a harvest and share with you and so every time they say receive you say no because there is an uncle somewhere I can run to it takes financial resources to bring glory to the name of the Lord and I tell you for as long as your heart is open something will come upon your life tonight it says both riches and honor come from you that it is within your power to make great Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17 Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God which teacheth thee to profit and leadeth thee by the way that you should go. God, listen carefully, God not a job, God not a business, God not an investment. I've taught you here, the foundational law that governs the activation of the blessing of God upon a man's life is that you must come to a point where you acknowledge that all blessings come from God. Blessings don't come from your job, please hear me. Blessings don't come from the investment you are involved with, not kingdom blessings. Blessings does not come from your real estate or whatever it is you are involved with. The challenge with many believers, and that's the reason why we are not able to see the power of God, is that our minds are on the vehicles and the platforms that help us to prosper, not the one who gives the prosperity. The vehicles are only profitable to you when God has authorized it to come to you. Are we together now? It is very important. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up in the morning early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. Please look at me. 
listen to what i'm teaching you tonight a life of hustling and running from pillar to post just depending on a job or depending on a business or depending on some investment to empower you you can become your investment can work well for you and one sickness can destroy an investment of 10 years within one month one arm robber can come and attack you and collect everything you have labored for it is the blessing of the lord that make it rich let me drum it again to our spirits respectfully ladies and gentlemen do not look at people who are not of faith and say after all they don't love god everybody must bow to something spiritual for authentic and lasting wealth to come let me repeat it just because you were not there when they were bowing does not mean they did not bow it is impossible to rise beyond a certain threshold of wealth see there are levels of wealth when you get to bar it's not goods and services you sell again <clears throat> it is your allegiance and your fraternity with the spirit that continues your journey from that point ask any wealthy man some of you here god has granted you the privilege to be millionaires and billionaires you know i'm not lying this away with all that talk that just makes you ignore spirituality out and just believe that it was just brain work if you are convinced that it's only your brain work that took you so far keep watching there are results that men cannot get there are results that businesses alone cannot produce there are financial results that investments alone cannot produce there are results that businesses and jobs alone cannot produce God's desire tonight is to purify your heart to realign your understanding and then to release something genuine upon your life that you will see changes in your life you will know can I tell you this I want you to make up your mind and believe that God is able to empower you the spirit that makes you have to sit down and wait for others to be blessed for you to eat I cause that spirit this night <laughs> hallelujah because you see when it has to do with the grace of God everybody can partake of it is that true give us Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 let me show you something the Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord. Read the remaining part, please. And great grace was upon how many? Great grace was upon them all. There are certain giftings of the Spirit, you will say he gave some. But when it has to do his, with his engracing and his empowerment, it's in everyone's destiny in Christ. Great grace was upon them all. Now let's talk for a few minutes about greatness and we we'll begin to pray because God spoke to me most of you have not paid attention to the subject of greatness nor have we been taught the necessity greatness is very powerful to 2019 or 2020 I think around the period of my birthday usually I would take out time to just pray and ask the Lord to give me a prophetic word for the next season of my life and God gave me this scripture and there was a striking difference striking difference between those two three years of my life striking difference Psalm 71 and verse 21 please read it as a prophetic word to your life ready one to read thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side one more time for the last time what does it mean to be great to be great means to increase in size to be great means to increase in size to be great means to expand beyond your current level to expand beyond your current level 
to be great means to be beyond the ordinary or to be beyond average to increase in size to expand beyond your current level to be great means to be beyond the ordinary or average when you are above and beyond the ordinary when you are above average you are great what does it mean to be great to be great means to be important and to be distinguished that's what it means to be great to be given a perception of importance and to be distinguished and the bible tells us that it is in every believer's destiny in christ to be great greatness is not privy to a group of preachers a group of businessmen a group of politicians a group of professionals in christ everyone is destined for greatness god's servant bishop david oedeko will say that there are no low callings in christ that everyone has been ordained by god for a high calling genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2 now the lord had said unto abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that i will show you let's read verse 2 together ready one to read and i will make of thee a great nation uh-huh and i will bless thee uh-huh and i will make thy name great thou shalt be a blessing just stop there what does it mean to be great to be great means to rise to a level where your life perpetually becomes and remains a blessing write it down to be great means to rise to a point to rise to a point in life and destiny where you can become and remain a blessing in the kingdom we measure greatness not just by how high you rise but how massive your impact and your contribution as far as being a blessing is concerned to be able to rise to a point where you can become and remain a blessing he said i will make a great nation of you genesis chapter 17 and verse 6 a blessing and a prophetic word that god gave abraham and i will make thee exceeding fruitful he says and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of you do you believe this please hear me everyone at the sound of my voice i don't care how you arrived here by reason of natural descent i don't care how the things and the happenings around your life the kinds and levels and the frequency of failure around your life i'm announcing to you at this miracle service that god still um destines for you to be great to rise to a point where you listen 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 let me tell you something about greatness greatness is also measured by the degree to which your personal goals have been satisfied that you can now turn and focus on lifting others and being a blessing provided you are still at a realm of meeting your needs and trying to make ends meet you are not great are you getting what i'm telling you now that god desires believers that we rise to a point where god would have sorted us left right and center and now you can have the privilege and the convenience to use your influence your intelligence the anointing of god upon your life and then your resources to now begin to reveal jesus to many around you that's greatness unfortunately not many people are ever able to rise to that level because at best most people keep scrounging around the base of destiny fighting with one another in petty jealousy not knowing that everyone has been destined for a glorious life in christ it doesn't matter what background you came from listen carefully it doesn't matter what has worked or what has not worked in your life male or female old or young there is there is potential for greatness in everyone you know we live in a world where it looks like god particularly hand picked a few people in ministry and pick a few people in business and pick a few people in politics and then the remaining keep cheering and admiring no that can't be god 
Can I tell you this? If all of us in this auditorium and around become great in Christ, it still will not interrupt anything as far as our personal results are concerned. Do you agree with me? Question. If God grants you the grace to build your house, does it affect my house? If God grants you the grace to take your children to good schools, does it affect any other person? No. The idea that just a few people should stand out and the rest keep sharing like, like a flock, like animals, is not a, it's a very wrong perception about God. The Bible says great grace was upon every one of them. We have a heritage of greatness in Christ. But can I tell you this? It takes the empowerment of the Spirit. It takes the empowerment of the Spirit to lift people. Like we read in that scripture. It is God that makes great. If God does not lift you, you cannot be lifted. Listen, even principles don't just work on their own. It is the power of God that empowers principles to work. Principles on their own don't just work. There is a force from the realm of the spirit that empowers principles. I like to give examples with cooking. Many of us here are good in the kitchen. As you cut your ingredients and mix this and mix that according to the principles, usually that pot is kept on fire. Is that true? Something is happening under while you are adding the ingredients. Most of the foods that we eat require fire, require cooking to assume the states that we want. More than just adherence to principles, you must encounter the power that makes for performance. Can I tell you, a majority of what God is going to be doing tonight is empowerment. Empowerment. Just placing something on your life. Placing something on your destiny. For some of you, adding to what you already have. Because the validity of what you have is exhausted. It's clear in your life now that you have stretched and it is enough. More love. More power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life more love more love more power Man of God, you can have a thousand sermons. You need the power of God to produce results. Genuine results. Can I tell you this? With all due respect, I can tell you sincerely, human beings are not stupid. Nobody will come and gather and sit down to listen to you if they know you don't have anything to offer. Human beings are not idiots. They will not shut their shops, leave their homes, take the risk, fly from one nation to the other. Who do you think you are without the power of God? But when that power is there, to the degree that is needed. Mm. To the degree that is needed. To the degree that is needed. Please look up. In Africa and in Nigeria, there are markets that are designated for certain things. Is that true? There's what we call in Abuja here, fish market. Which other one do we have? We have all kinds of markets that focus on certain things. You cannot go to a fish market looking for material, clothes. You most likely may not find it there. But there are malls that they will tell you this is home for everything. Almost everything you are looking for, they call it a one-stop shop for everything. For as long as you step in there, you go to large malls like Dubai malls, you can step in there and literally, the only thing I'm sure they don't sell there are human beings. Anything at all, people took out time to intelligently make sure that everything is there. When you become like that mall, you see that? 
so the sick know that if i come there is something for me those who say i am not sick but is there still a place for me my life is not going forward there is still something for them all men seek for you you must trust god for an encounter with power let's stop making noise giving explanations wasting help those under the anointing wasting the time of god's people it takes power it takes power to turn dreams to reality it takes power to bring healing to the sick every testimony that you see here is a product of power the prophecy upon your life is power dependent for its manifestation man of god you must desire the power of god genuine empowerment sincerity of heart is good but it's not enough Don't be like the fig tree that has green leaves and yet no figs. What kind of power are you receiving tonight? Number one, the power to get wealth. There is such a thing as the power to get wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee the power some version said the ability to produce wealth the power to get wealth listen there are ideas that produce wealth there is your value that you turn to products and services and sell it to a targeted consumer base to produce wealth but there is the power to prosper The power to get wealth. Most people have not encountered the power to get wealth. Most people have ideas that produce wealth. Most people have skills that produce wealth. But you are like that fridge with no light. You are like a television that can show different channels but no light. More than your skills and beyond your skills it takes the power of the holy spirit why am i telling you this because this is what is going to land on your life this night <laughs> apostle i have a shop but no customers what is wrong absence of power not absence of products there are clearly products there and it is true that your products are needed there are more than enough people for someone to come there but it takes power The gentleman who said he had a dream he had been building and it got to i think zinking or somewhere linter level and it stopped there for a long time the spirit that brings you close to it and yet you never truly actualize it the power to get wealth god is able to bring power God is able to increase people and then let me tell you this one of the assignments of the power to get wealth number one it is a supernatural empowerment that comes upon you and it will draw people it will draw opportunities and it will draw resources to you but you see the power to get wealth is also the power that opens your eyes to see there is a relationship between prosperity and your sight hear what i'm telling you i want to reveal a mystery for you if your eye is blind you will be poor it says lift up your eyes and see as far as your eyes can see isaiah 45 verse 3 isaiah 45 verse 3 Tonight's miracle service was made for you. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness. Question. There are treasures. But the problem is that they are in a place where there is no light. How do you now know that they are there? If you do not have the power to see, you can pass it and not know. If I drop a bundle of money here, cash, and I off the light and make sure this place is dark, you can keep pushing it as many times 
and yet not see i will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that i the lord which calleth thee by name i am the god of israel the treasures of darkness do you know why god put darkness there so that no one else will see it until the person appointed the treasures of darkness some of you by reason of this impartation you will pass a land you have been looking every day and this time around you say i'm seeing something that no one else is seeing every major business today you see believe me when i tell you it was a treasure in darkness it was always there but the eyes to see the eyes to see the eyes to see the eyes to see if your eye is blind you would stand and weary yourself at the gates of prosperity and not be able to see can i tell you if everybody see what you are seeing they can't reward you for it there is nothing unique when everybody is seeing you can't clap for me for seeing what you are seeing no but if i am seeing what you are not seeing and i can bring it out and make it visible to you then you have to reward me for reaching into darkness with that light the power to prosper can place something on your destiny and you start seeing in a desert you will see an oasis there because the veil has been taken away from your eyes please listen to me most of us continue to pass wealth every day but because of the blindness of our sight you can sit down and with the eyes to see god can reveal secrets to you and in one moment look at that gentleman for god's sake he found out that nothing else was working in his life didn't go to school didn't do anything and he just felt lord what will i what can i do and he went to the field do you know there are many football fields he would have gone to the one where his destiny helper is not he would still be playing football but it takes the eyes to see listen when i pray this prayer you will know who to not relate with and who to relate with because there is jonah and there is jesus beware of who is on your boat don't carry jonah in the in a bit to look for jesus listen carefully you need the seeing eyes businessmen listen to me without the seeing eyes everything looks like white from a distance it's until it comes close you say ah no this is black the seeing eyes satan always comes as an angel of light there are some of you the financial troubles you got into in your life is because of blindness you thought it was this and found out it was not the power to prosper corrects your vision so that you are able to see why am i taking out time to tell you this so that when we start praying you don't just fall and stand for nothing you know what you are receiving the financial testimonies that will arise from tonight's miracle service will bring glory to the name of the lord can i tell you this hear me i'm saying this prophetically you will hear testimonies of nobodies people who as they are standing here they are still surprised by themselves say what has brought me to this realm products of prophecy Do you believe what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. The power to prosper. Man of God, listen to me. If you have the power to heal and the power to do all of these things, if there is no power to prosper on your ministry, you are going to compromise. It's only a matter of time. I assure you, no matter how much a man of integrity you are, the bills of ministry will squeeze you to a point where you will get into things that are not godly. There are many people who started well, but financial pressure pushed them. Remember, I've taught you the scripture. Every time there is hunger, Israel will go to Egypt to look for food. When Satan wants to take you to Egypt, he uses hunger. Because when there is hunger, you will leave the place of covenant and promise to a place of compromise in search for food. Many people have sold their hands today. You see all these are young people who are doing money rituals all around 
Some of those boys were born from Christian families. Don't downplay the hunger of people to feel like their life is making meaning. Nobody will sit down and keep growing older and their lives at least financially is not making meaning. They will join groups. They will join all kinds of things. Ah, somebody needs to arise. Oh. Somebody needs to arise. You, you need to be angry. You need to be angry. You need to be angry. Angry at your current level. In one minute, just pray in the spirit. I will see continue, but just pray in one minute in the spirit. in the name of jesus hallelujah hear me brothers and sisters remember sir isaac newton taught us that anybody will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion it will remain there for as long as it is kept there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise that means your destiny will remain where it is until a force from heaven comes to push it. Listen, I came tonight as a prophetic midwife to tell you where you have stand. It's enough. It's enough. It's time for you to move for God's sake. It is enough in the name of Jesus Christ. Arise from these ashes. It's time for you to fly like the eagle that you are. Micah 2 10. Give it to us, please. Ah. Micah chapter 2 and verse 10. This is a prophetic word for someone. It just came to my spirit now. Read it from the depth of your heart. Are you ready? One to read. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sword destruction. If you remain at that level, it will destroy you. Arise, it is not your rest. This is not your place. You are an eagle. Stop dwelling around with chickens. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray this scripture in one minute. Lord, I arise. I arise. It's time to arise. This is not my rest. I arise. I depart from this level. I arise in the name of Jesus spiritually I arise financially I arise as touching the greatness that you have placed upon my spirit I arise someone pray this is not my rest this is not my rest I refuse to settle for less man of God pray thank God for what God has done so find your ministry but this is not your rest evangelist pray this is not your rest prophet pray politician pray this is not your rest professional pray this is not your rest please pray this is a miracle service you are praying yourself to a new level. This is not my rest. In business, this is not my rest. As touching the call of God, what I saw in my vision is yet to happen physically. I will give him no rest because this is not my rest. Financially, this is not your rest.
listen to me. Please listen. Listen. Look up, everybody. What does it take to live where you are to the next level? On the part of God, power. On your part, anger and hunger. Two things. Anger and hunger are required ingredients to break through your current season. If you are not angry enough, you will remain there giving excuses. And if you are not hungry enough, you cannot be filled. Man of God, you will remain at that level of the anointing, praying for 100 people and having only one person getting healed. It won't work that way. The nations won't place a demand upon you that way. That is the honest truth. Professional. Uh-uh. Not at that level. Someone is going to pray. Father, I am tired of this level. I am both angry at this level. Thank you for this level. But Lord, I know that I am overdue. When a baby stays more than nine months in his mother's womb, he calls for concern. When a baby stays in his mother's womb, if it is before nine months, that's fine. The baby has to be patient. But above nine months, doctors will tell us there is a problem. Lift your voice and pray. Bring a performance, oh God, at another level. Bring a performance in ministry. Bring a performance in family. Bring a performance in my finances. Bring a performance in my destiny. Empowerment from heaven. The grace that turns dreams to their reality. Outside are you praying? Inside are you praying? Shatter branda gata katos koto fresh, ella kata branda zagate shkali kafros kasi ne kata, manda praka tos koto plazi kete breskiya. Power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen. When God answers your prayer, how does He answer it? By giving you power. God answers prayer by sending power the power that turns that desire to its reality now listen i'm going to pray on your prayer request but before i start ministry you are going to pray on it by yourself and declare that lord in this season this and that and that make your request known as you pray please do not keep quiet And don't say God cannot do it all. Don't entertain unbelief. You don't have to lift it up. Even if it's written somewhere, you just begin to pray. Mention everything by name. Father, it is within your power to make great. It is within your power to prosper. It is within your power to lift. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Please hear me. Listen carefully, please. In the name of Jesus, 
can I tell you I know definite times in my life where certain levels of empowerment came and I knew the change when we started this walk you see and I say this with every sense of responsibility and humility as at the time this work started this thing called the power to get wealth was not there there were ideas I was reading materials and learning because I knew that doing ministry with integrity will need resources and I didn't want to go around inconveniencing people every day God's people will give but church can't be about money every time and then you can't be demanding money from people and not release the grace that empowers them do you know let me tell you when the anointing of God rests upon people who truly love you and they are blessed you don't even have to ask them for anything they will be too grateful to live they will never allow you to beg for tea and bread not within there are people who have the hearts to give listen something is about to fall here right now that's why I wanted to listen I remember praying and studying I had learned principles and a day came I had to study the life of Abraham David and study these people I said I found a missing link I was already anointed though but just because you have the anointing is not like a general purpose tool uh -uh. the anointing is assignment specific the anointing for prosperity will not bring healing no their allocations are different you can have a first aid box with many drugs they are all called drugs you cannot carry the drug for high blood pressure and swallow it for headache you are causing trouble the design they are all drugs you go to a doctor a professional and he will diagnose you oh you have malaria he will give you the drugs for malaria even if you have malaria and another sickness most times doctors will choose which one to treat first when you are fine they will change the drug and treat the other thing many of you have received many impartations you can know the one that is missing this night don't keep quiet but as far as God spoke to me oh, this issue of the power to prosper I've done teachings on prosperity many of you have given but I want you to be angry know that God is able to help men you are Ebenezer ah. you are Ebenezer this I know about the helper of men you are Ebenezer you are Ebenezer listen you are Ebenezer the lifter of men you are Ebenezer God can help men stop struggling alone you are Ebenezer I remember praying and crying to God and say Lord this work is enormous the apostolic and the prophetic ministry requires a lot let this grace for God's sake come upon my life and also come upon this vision the power to prosper can be on you as a man of God and not be on your ministry you will prosper while the ministry suffers the power to prosper can be on the ministry and not on you the ministry will prosper and leave you to suffer and you will start compromising can I tell you this when that grace came with all due respect and honor to Jesus I knew it has come to stay the Bible says listen it says on the day of Pentecost all of a sudden they saw what looked like cloven tongues and it came and rested or sat it didn't visit and go back there are graces that can sit and rest on you when it stays on you that is it I submit to you with all humility every devil and every principality from hell knows that this is a ministry God has helped
the ministry is not the building the ministry is you and you must answer that name this night in the name of Jesus Christ it does not matter what spirit of poverty has tied down people in your family you saw people educated to PhD but they could not build a single house that is a wicked spirit when your level of intellectual investment does not match your financial rewards something is wrong with that equation and then number two we are going to pray that God will move us do you know let me tell you this any sincere man of God who loves his people your greatest joy is not your personal testimony if someone buys me a car today or buys me a plane or builds me a house thank God for all of that but that is not really the testimony I'll come and share here my greatest joy today is to sit down and hear people saying I came from a family with nothing serving idols and now I am on fire for Jesus loving Jesus and see what God has done that's right now that's a testimony you must be a wicked leader to rejoice over your results as above and against the people God has sent you to the real joy of a leader is not his personal testimony but to know that God's people are growing in leaps and bounds can I tell you man of God this may be a secret for you to learn when there are genuine testimonies not stage managed not exaggerated genuine workings of God's power in your ministry it is impossible for that ministry to be empty Lord lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land a higher place than I have found Lord plants my feet on higher ground the last prayer and then it will be a very quick one in this place tonight father I vow that as you cause me to be great it will not distract my work with you rather it will give me an opportunity to serve your purposes lift up your voice and pray that sincere prayer someone is praying pray and let my god surprise you tonight pray and let the one who backs us up surprise you tonight lord that my greatness will not be an interruption to my spiritual life it will not be an interruption to my love and my fire for you that is usually the condition if the nations will see him through your greatness if the nations will know him through your greatness then there is no limit to what he can do if that greatness will not bring pride arrogance Hallelujah. I wish I had the liberty to share some of my testimonies. But sometimes we live in a world where people misunderstand everything men of God say. Once you say A, people will say you said A to Z. And it, it turns out to not even edify people again. But I will tell you one or two. Listen carefully. I remember a time when a real estate company came and met me and they said sir God gave us an instruction that everywhere on earth we build an estate that will build a house for you it's our covenant with God anywhere on earth across the globe for as long as this company exists just know that anywhere you see us building an estate I don't know how many estates they have built now across the world if if you tell me the power to prosper does not work think again hallelujah I remember a company of wealthy people who came and met me and said apostle God said 
we should make you a non-executive board member of this company what for what do you people do this and that and that and that this is the instruction God gave so what will be my contribution to your company that spiritual advantage you represent the ark of God to our business I'm sorry oh I'm sorry you see this is why sometimes some it's good to say certain things to just help you know that the man standing before you here is not talking nonsense let me tell you if you think this is just a preacher's talk motivating you think again I submit to you with all humility what it takes to run koinon, one koinonia service is what many people may use for conferences believe me when I tell you what it takes to run one koinonia service you've never seen anybody come here to cry to manipulate to say this and that you see when God sends a word to Jacob he lights upon Israel we are not the inventors of these things we also received it from the carriers he said go to them that sell and buy hallelujah our world today only wants people to brag once you are bragging and making noise doing a lot of things aha uh -huh. but once you are modest and humble and you live your life with modesty sometimes we say these things not to attract conflict that every devil in hell knows that till Jesus comes this ministry will not know poverty just believe me when I tell you no, 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 no. It's not a prayer point. I'm telling you what has happened. It will only be from glory to glory. It's not pride. Please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm arrogant. I'm only describing for you what must start happening in your life from this night. Yeah. Apostle, I'm coming from a background where nobody knows me. Apostle, right now, as I'm standing here, I'm in debt of one billion, five hundred million. Fine rest. You are not the first to get into debt. Please. There are people who have been into debt of billions of dollars and God brought them out. Find rest. Can I tell you, for anyone who is owing here, business is not what you use to solve debt. Prophecy. Go and read your Bible. Every time you are in debt, let me save you trouble. It's not doing another business that will bring you out. It is the power of prophecy. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on. Hallelujah. At the count of three, we are going to pray. In fact, please, my people, hold your hands. Let me start with you people. This is my dear leaders. Look at me. In the name of Jesus, may this power to prosper come on you. Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I release you to strange dimensions of prosperity and increase that people will arise and begin to help you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus, be shifted to a new level, mysterious dimensions of kingdom wealth, even by the power of God. Now I decree and declare, at the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Please bring those under the anointing. Some of you come from families where nobody has risen. My God is about to lift you. Are you ready now? Father, may this anointing, this man to come upon your people. Please bring them out. At the count of three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Bring them out, please. Take that grace now. I lift you by prophecy. From where you are, I shift you to a new season. Please help those, my God. Kalakata branda gatas kapikata.
Please, whether you're an usher or not, just help the ushers. We have to hurry up now. Someone's life is changing. I don't care what financial situation. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, such as I have, give I unto you. Step into a new season of prosperity. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, you are changing my life. Changing my story. Please bring them out very quickly. Let's hurry up. If you can, as many as you can. If you can't bring them out, that's all right. But we have to hurry up. Someone pray. Don't wait till you fall under the anointing. Open your mouth and begin to pray. A renaissance of financial possibilities. From your lowly estate, my God is lifting you. Hallelujah. Where's Jimmy? Please arrange for him to come and sing that song, The Lifter of Men. Just the chorus. David, damn you help. Whether it's a guitar or whatever. If the keyboardist cannot play, let someone help him very quickly, please. Please bring them out quickly. them out my god something is breaking out here outside inside those following from any nation the power of god to lift and to prosper is resting upon you Hear me hear me some of you by reason of this anointing i'm seeing at least 13 people at least 13 people at least 13 people your destiny is not even in this country this is what i'm seeing as god is showing me right now that anointing is going to come upon you don't ask me how it will happen Parante shekete balata. i relocate you now by prophecy go to your place of prophecy Go to your place of destiny. I pick you a bacato scatter from where you are. The land where you must prosper. May my God take you there now. May my God take you there now. is not here i'm saying it again anyone here whichever nation and whichever region where your prosperity is tied i shift you by prophecy go to that region now i release you let the limitations leave you now can i tell you this it is a dangerous thing to be in a place and there are people who are watching me you are outside this nation but your destiny is in this nation you are roaming around across the globe and finding out that even when you go to a place of plenty there is no peace because you must be in your assigned place i relocate you back to your place of assignment Can I tell you this? Hear me. Hear me. All through my time of ministry, I'd been in Zaria. I'd become so emotionally connected there. But I knew when the season was done for my assignment there. 
it was a very difficult thing but i knew that if i do not move where god is moving as far as my assignment is concerned some of you this is the simple key you came to receive you can be roaming about there are some of you want to travel abroad is not in the blueprint of your destiny you may visit and come back but just because you hear that people are roaming around there are still people suffering in every nation don't just emotionally enter the plane and go and die my life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men lifter of men i will hold on Now hear me i want to pray for those who are in any kind of financial trouble what's the power of prophecy bring you out of any financial situation hear me there are people some of you are owing some of you made careless business decisions and as it is right now it is only the god of heaven who can lift you i've prayed for your spiritual life and i'll pray again but this night we want to deal with these things some of you are under corporate debt you may not be the individual in trouble but you are under corporate debt your organization is owing all kinds to the millions and billions god can help men can i pray for you father in the name of jesus christ by this anointing anyone here who is in any kind of debt or financial situation personally corporately ministries that are owing and are in trouble businesses that are owing and are in trouble individuals that are owing and are in trouble in the name of jesus christ come out of that debt now come out of that debt now by the ministry of destiny help us come out of that debt now hallelujah there are spirits that have moved from family to family ensuring everybody remains poor a family of everyone educated nobody working everyone educated nobody the highest salary may be 20,000 yes we are grateful but that cannot be enough now I want to pray fire will come upon you god is going to set you free because there are many hear me your salvation tonight is not just for you alone it's for your family members there are many of you i decree and declare any family here under a spiritual yoke maybe something happened in time past and a cause or a pronouncement was made over your family that keeps recycling poverty and financial struggles right now at the count of three please bring them under the anointing as you shout jesus that altar will catch fire now please bring them out are you ready one two three shout jesus i break financial yokes please bring them out i break financial yokes every spirit recycling patterns of poverty every spirit whether you are an usher or not please help those under the anointing Every spirit outside, inside, following online, responsible for lack and poverty and want as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant, we set you free tonight. 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 Free tonight. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to pray. I release myself from every embargo someone pray I decree and declare a prophetic release every embargo every yoke it tied down my father it tied down my grandfather it tied down wicked people I am a righteous man in Christ and I decree and declare 
that by the blood of the eternal covenant I appropriate my healing and my deliverance One more minute you are praying. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free from this embargo. I break free. Financial embargo, I cost you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of meeting and learning from extremely wealthy people. Extremely wealthy people. I am not in ignorance. I submit to you by the privilege of God's grace as to the financial principles and the systems that make for the blessing. This prayer and this miracle service is by no means excusing your your fortitude to comply with financial principles that bless you but let me tell you something and let me teach you something there are only two ways financial resources will enter your life only two ways number one value that is exchanged number two favor that is it there is no other way financial resources will enter your pocket your value packaged and turned into products and services Garnished with excellence and served to a, a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. That is one dimension. But then the other is called favor. I want to show you how God restored Job. Job 42 verse 10. My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men The lifter of men I will hold on through the storm. This is for someone. I will hold on through the rain. My life will soon reveal you are the lifter of men. Lifter of. Sing it one more time as a prophecy. That I will hold on to the storm. Ah. I will hold on. My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men The lifter of men Can I tell you this? There is no one here under the sound of my voice Or will there ever be Whose situation is worse than that of Job Let me show you what God can do And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job twice as much as he had thank god for that but we want to know how it happened are you ready next verse verse 11. <laughs> read with me if you're a christian one to read hold on hold on hold on are you seeing how god restored him number one then came to him all his brethren Every next level and finances you are trusting God for is in the hands of men. Until the men come, you cannot get what is in their hands. It says, then there came unto him. Where were they when he was crying? The Bible says God turned. So how does God turn? He places something upon your life that will start compelling people to start coming. There came unto him his brethren and all his sisters. And they that had been of his acquaintance before, they were the ones that made him prosper before. That means, how did poverty come to his life? Something was taken away from him, and everybody left physically. How did God restore it? Something came. I'm, I'm showing you because something is about to come on you now. Please read it. Are you ready? One to read. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Uh huh. And all his sisters and they that had been of his acquaintance before and did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil 
that the Lord had brought upon him. Now, here's the secret. Read. And every man. How many men? There is something that comes on you that makes every man bless you. Not just those who do business with you. Every man. Every man. Read on, please. One to go. Every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold. Can I tell you this? Some of you have gone through serious financial hardship. God organized this miracle service to bring financial healing, to bring financial deliverance. And I'm showing you how it happened because we are going to pray now. I've taught you the ministry of destiny helpers. These are men anointed, commissioned by God to pay attention to your destiny. Not everyone is a destroyer. There are people who can enter your life like they entered the life of that my gentleman and turn his life around. Who would have told him that a year before or two years before, there were people in that football field before he came. It is what is on you that controls what is around you. Every man gave him a piece of money. Every man gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold father who have you anointed in this season to hold my hands and move me to the next financial level I declare place the grace upon my life that will bring them to my destiny open your mouth and pray place that grace this is a miracle service make sure you are praying Place that grace upon my life, oh God, that will compel the helpers of my destiny to attend to me. Place that grace upon my life. Forget about where you have been. Pray. pray I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word my story is about to change you are the lifter of men the lifter of men Lord I will hold on to the storm I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You are the lifter of men Hear me, believers, in the name of Jesus Please listen to me I submit to you by God That there are more than enough people in any city to be used by God to lift you nobody will come and lift you on their own I've told you this there is the power that rests upon your head thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters please place your hand on your head Just place your hand on your head. Father, this is a miracle service where you are sorting people financially once and for all. My God and my King, upon every head, right here, inside, all the overflows, outside, I am praying, Parakoskia. Lord, the grace that must rest upon them, that will compel the helpers of destiny, to gravitate towards them in the name of Jesus may that anointing rest upon you now may that anointing rest upon you now
in the name of Jesus hallelujah please put down your hands who is Christy I'm hearing the name Christy my assignment tonight is to deal with the issues Christy who is that where are you coming from I want to pray for you I presume there may be many Christies but your life is about to change and in case I'm prophesying to people you open your heart and receive what God says to one he says to all are we together I don't mean to embarrass you but please hear me there's a prophetic word I won't ask the person to come out for social reasons there is a lady here a man kept you in a house hold on now let me finish the prophecy you don't know what I'm about to say just hold on let's be patient and let prophecy finish before so that you don't answer yes to something that a man kept you in a house listen to me that man is married with his wife but he kept you in a house somewhere you are in, in a relationship with the man and he kept you in a house somewhere I want you to know that that man is going to destroy you he has lied to you and made you believe that if he does not help you where will you get help I'm advising you in this miracle service in the name of Jesus and with every sense of responsibility I know it is not easy it's easy to tell people you are working in this and that you must be ready to help people when you want them to make that decision but let me tell you whoever that person is I'm speaking to you by the spirit I want you to pack out of that place because with what I'm seeing that man did not just keep you there there is something occultic that he's doing there you hear what I'm saying I'm speaking to you by the Spirit of God back out of there he may be giving you 10 naira but he's taking the glory of what 2 million from you and we have to be careful as believers sometimes you know why it is important to empower believers like this because if we don't empower believers when people are desperate they will do anything for money they will come to church and remove the 10% and drop it but they know where they got it from so it's not enough to just criticize people and say you are this you are following men you are following women you are following whatever no 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 we have to empower people first then we'll tell them this is how it is done in the kingdom there are many parents today who are enjoying a lot of financial blessings from their children and dancing and they do not know the dirty and demonic things their children are doing to bring money and it's easy to insult them like we always like doing in church when we hear of people's situations who are not rational to sit down and think and approach it from a heart of love God brought you people out here by his spirit I want to pray for you madam your suffering has come to an end this night please leave her careful careful so you don't injure her I know what I just saw I want to pray for her Kai, oh dear oh dear oh dear you see let me tell you something my dear people for as long as God brought you here this night I assure you by God that the power that will stop you from receiving your testimony is not in existence I'm looking at this woman in a vision and I'm seeing a woman suffering bad luck anybody that says he will bless this woman something must happen to them and they will neglect them if there is anybody like that people keep making promises tomorrow they will say next week they will say whatever is stopping them from reaching out to you I cause it to his root in the name of Jesus I cause it to his root in the name of Jesus hallelujah please don't 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 I, I don't want you to feel offended the, may God bless you madam I want to pray for you I'm seeing a woman you are a widow oh dear this woman has suffered oh this woman you are a widow and if I don't pray for you it's nothing at all is coming from anyone it's as if you don't have children it's as if nothing is happening you are you are quite an aged woman I don't know who that person is the Lord is asking me to call that person and let me pray for that person you are a woman an elderly woman you are a widow but honestly as it is sincerely 
that you love God sincerely but absolutely nothing is happening this woman I'm seeing I know you came out but I'm seeing this woman at the overflow outside the overflow outside the overflow outside I'm not just praying for every widow of course I will pray for you if you come out but the particular person I want to pray for you are outside father you are the God that can open every door there is no mystery as to how finances come it is not magic it will always happen through men the Bible says good measure pressed down shaken together running over shall men give shall men give the Lord called that name Christy and I want to pray for you for some of you you are standing as altars over your family because God wants to wipe the tears of your family in the name of Jesus Christ the power of God will come on you right now and believe me the only thing that will bring you upstage here after this prayer is your testimony therefore I stretch my hands right now every embargo up over your finances an anointing is coming on you right now release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus Christ release them now in the name of Jesus I open this door in the spirit and I declare walk into your high places in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the Lord is showing me a family here you are owing medical bills you are owing as I'm speaking now you are owing medical bills even to the millions you are owing medical bills I don't know who that person is whether you are watching online or you are here it's like there's somebody let me tell you this i'm going to pray for the sick shortly do you know that many manifestations of sickness is actually an attack on your finances it's not about the sickness because there is a relationship between your health and your wealth the sicker you are the more your finances will tell to so when satan wants to attack your finances one of the ways he does is to plant a mysterious sickness. It will not go up. It will not go down. It will remain there and keep eating finances. If there is anything I know that can destroy finances overnight is health. No matter how wealthy you think you are. Pray that you are not plagued or somebody around you plagued. There are people who spend as much as a million naira every week to be alive. If you have saved even if it's hundred million in how long we would have depleted everything people have had to sell their houses because of finances people have had to sell everything they spent their life building hear me God is able to lift you from that yoke i will be praying for we are not going to take testimonies that our time is gone we may not take testimonies of people to pray tonight i want to deal because we've not even gotten to greatness i must spend the next 15 minutes and flog this thing out it must step over your life honor and greatness we are dealing with finances those of you who are here the the the, the wither that came now let me tell you this do you know any day you see any widow or someone who is genuinely bereaved and incapacitated even if it is ten naira, you can give them it is a blessing unto God you see that remember the widow at Nain she had lost all the men in her life her husband a symbol of her strength and defense had gone and now her child who represented her future was also gone when jesus saw her condition he said no we can't leave you this way and he brought up the child nobody prays to lose anyone but if and when it happens it is important to stand with them and stand by them to pray god is able to help we can't promise you that every day everybody will be giving you money but we can promise you that something can be placed upon your life 
that will insist and ensure that you are not left without help. Let me pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, look at me. You are a widow. You are standing for who? Your mom. Where is she? Don't cry. Jesus is able to help you. You see, let me tell you this. You can't comfort people who mourn when your hand is empty. I hope you know that. Because after you pray for them and do whatever you do, some of them will stand and they are expecting that even if it's 10 naira, you put something in their pocket. And it's easy for us to make a lot of noise in church and talk and say this and that and that, God will do it. You must reject poverty in your life. There's no reason why you should remain the way you are, not after this miracle service. Father, I pray for these ones. You are the only one who knows how it feels, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, you call them out to change their lives. And I pray right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, Turn their lives around. Release that grace upon them. Your physical husbands may have gone, but may God become that husband for you and ensure that your needs are supplied to the latter. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the hand of God rests upon your life. I don't know, but I just feel in my heart to say this, and I say it respectfully. Anyone here who is a widow or who has lost a loved one and there are people who are troubling you in the name of Jesus Christ we agree right now may the troublers of your destiny go now now you see anybody who troubles a woman who does not have strength on her own under normal circumstances must be a wicked person Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying again. Anyone who is troubling you, maybe something you labored with your husband to get, and now just because he's gone, people are bullying you and bringing all kinds of trouble. I stand by the apostolic and the prophetic. I decree and declare, may your troublers depart from you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead I use this once in front to pray for every other person and I decree in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God that anyone who is troubling any widow here I will not let her have peace except otherwise but I pray that if the fault is not from them may God show them mercy immediately In the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I pray that every man destined and appointed by God to hold your hands no matter who and what you have lost especially your husbands I pray for you may God raise genuine people with no strings attached who will hold your hands and see that you don't cry again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's celebrate them as they go. God bless you. You will return with testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready for the next prayer? To be great means to live where you are and go to the next level of your life. To be great means to rise to a point where you can also be a blessing. You can't always be the one looking up. You need to rise to a point where you can look down and reach to others. Father, whatever it takes for my greatness, release it upon me. Someone lift your voice and pray. Don't be tired. Tonight is a good bargain. Tonight is a good bargain by the Spirit. Go ahead and pray. Lord, whatever it takes, finance, influence, relationships, results, opportunities, Release it upon my life. Release it upon my life. Release it upon my life. Release it upon my life.
release it upon my life hallelujah hallelujah please look up god is able to make people great from where they are to the next level genesis 26 13. give us new king james version please if you can nkjv read with me ready one to read and the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. Verse 14. Hmm. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. Next verse. 15. hold on hold on hold on go back to king james now i want to show you something because there is a name god is about to call someone for all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of abraham his father so the man had struggles the bible takes out time to tell you he did not just become very great like that there were struggles they dug a well the philistines had stopped them and filled it with the earth 16. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, he said, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. When you read the verses after, for the sake of time, it will tell you that he dug a well and they covered it. He named it. He dug a well, they covered it. And the third one, they left him and he called it Rehoboth. He says, For God has given me my own space. My own space. My own space. I want to pray for you the grace for greatness is a real grace read your Bible look at Abraham read your Bible look at Sarah read your Bible look at Esther read your Bible Joshua Gideon ordinary people you can start from where you are but you should not remain there you must rise for the Bible declares that the path of the just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter even unto the perfect day what is greatness to be elevated to a position in life and destiny where you enjoy the blessings of productivity the blessings of influence and now you can reach down to people and also be a blessing to them in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed if that happens to you that is the epitome of greatness God wants to set us free from this life of always hoping that someone will rise and help you it is in your destiny to rise to I want to speak over your life do you believe in the power of prophecy Bazanji kunyaba Mete me kona Mete me kona Bazanji soro Bazanji kunyaba When God makes you very great, listen to me. There are many quarrels and there are many issues that are unnecessary. Can I tell you? When Joseph became great, it was easy to forgive his brothers. There are many family problems. There are many extended age-long problems that become unnecessary when you become great. If they had come to meet a struggling Jacob, uh, uh, Joseph in Egypt, he will tell them you are wicked and evil people. Can I tell you? Many hurt and pain you are carrying in your heart is because you have not been consoled by greatness. There is a way God lifts you. It becomes unnecessary to discuss the past again. 
Did you hear what I said? One of the ways God heals you from the past is to make you higher than that realm by far. So that the issue of money of 1995, the issue of insulting you of two times, it just becomes great people have little worries because God has so consoled them. In the name of that night could not King Ahasuerus sleep hear me there are many people whose lives you have helped but there is a spirit that came upon them to give what is supposed to be to you to another person and you keep wondering how the king to honor Mordecai but there had to be a spirit sponsored by the man Haman but that night when he opened the chronicles he said read it for me and he found there the good works of Mordecai let me speak to someone even if it was 10 years ago it was written did you hear what I said even if it was 10 years ago you helped for every time you help someone know hallelujah something very interesting happened not too long ago a man of God called me and he said apostle you came over to our church to preach this was sometime last year and she said um, just to let you know that since that time we have been putting some seeds together months after you had come and gone there were people who said the Lord instructed them that they sow into your life and we had been collating those seeds and he said man of God we're joking with him he said I'm surprised can you imagine this that people will keep coming with seeds and I told him, I was going to tell him, okay, God bless you, just take the seed. He said, no, whatever grace that made these people months after you had left our church, I am the pastor in this church, oh, you see. A similar thing had happened to another pastor, a great friend of mine that I went to preach for. Somebody now called him and said, please, do you have Apostle's account number? The person said, what for? He said, I want to bless him and the only person I can remember is you. And he called me and we're joking. He said, how can a man call me? I'm a man of God too. And be asking me of another man's account number and i sent it to him and he made a transfer as if i'm not there and we were just joking and laughing very good man but i thought about it it's terrible for blessings to pass through you to others and yet nothing stops for you every time people want to bless others you are the middle man you are the one who connects people who will now connect to your own in the name of jesus yours will not pass you by in the name of Jesus, yours will not pass you by. Your job will not pass you by. Your increase will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Let me bring a word of comfort for some of you. Can I tell you, the kindness you have been showing people has been building a house that you don't know of. So that when it is time, they will just bring you the key to a house that is already built. I'm saying this like a joke, but you'll be surprised. And you will ask yourself, when did I build this? And God will say, for every kindness, for every act of love, for every prayer, for every intercession, you were adding one block upon another. Let me prophesy to you again. There are things that because you have made happen for others, you will not struggle over to happen in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now place your hand if you are trusting God for healing. I will just speak over your life and then... If you are yet to submit the prayer request, let's do it fast. Those who are yet to submit the prayer request, please usher us inside, outside, station it very quickly. Let's, let's redeem the time. I'm going to speak over your life. Tonight's service is dedicated to our finances and increase as God revealed, but I'm still going to minister. I know that there are people who came with all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. The Bible says, and as he taught, the power of God was present to heal. Place your hand on your chest or wherever you are trusting God for, and I'm going to pray for you. I will praise the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. I will worship Him and give a praise to Him alone. He who was and is and is to come. I will sing before his throne forever. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, every spirit of infirmity, I command by the power that raised Christ from the dead, 
it leaves your body now by the blood that was shed on Calvary's tree and by the eternal sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now let the power of resurrection touch your body the power of God is touching you right now be healed in Jesus name back pain be healed in Jesus name headaches be healed in Jesus name please help them blindness be healed in Jesus name growth in any part of your body dissolve now in Jesus name ear conditions be healed in Jesus name cardiovascular conditions be healed in Jesus name arthritis of all sorts be healed in Jesus name peptic ulcer be healed in Jesus name heart conditions be healed in Jesus name HIV be healed in Jesus name cancers be healed in Jesus name diabetes be healed in Jesus name respiratory conditions be healed in the name of Jesus Uni urinary conditions be healed in Jesus name bone conditions be healed in Jesus name there's someone I'm seeing in a vision um, there's this thing the medical people call cholesterol you have an extremely high level it's not about weight for some reason and if I don't pray for you now with what I'm seeing it may kill you in the name of Jesus you need to seek medical attention whoever that person is please seek medical attention but I'm still going to pray for you in the name of Jesus by the mercies of God you will not die you will not die supernaturally may the Lord help you high BP goes down now in the name of Jesus swellings unusual swellings across your body from your head to your toe I declare be healed now there's someone always dreaming of death even if it's just a little nap you take you must have this dream of death in the name of Jesus I curse that spirit now now whether I mention your case or not in the name of Jesus the son of the living God be healed now tonight we may not have the time to come and take testimonies because of what we took our time to deal with but please whether right now or after the service make sure you check yourself and some of you may need to visit the doctors you may need to visit our medical stand when you find out that you have been healed do well to register your testimony through our media department or you can even go to the PR stand afterwards and we'll give you an opportunity to share it in any of the services now stretch your hands please it's time to pray the general prayer over the request please if there are more requests let's do it very quickly stretch your hands remember this is I, I love to pray on our request because it is the most accurate representation of your desires the Bible says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God is someone stretching his hand here I will kneel you can do the standing let me kneel and pray over this in one minute I'd like you to stretch your hands and begin to declare father you have visited me and the testimony will return back to me go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus Christ father in the name of Jesus Christ we decree and declare somebody is praying father in the name of Jesus visit your people may they know that you are the God of the universe grant results grant results oh God that by miracle service may they will only return with testimonies grant results strange results even by the Spirit of God is someone praying 
we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit we decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit we decree and declare strange visitations supernatural encounters turn arounds by the Spirit for me to do I am that I am that's what God is asking someone tonight is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do Father, I bow my knees to you because you hear me when I pray and I thank you because the Bible declares that this is the confidence that we have in you that when we ask anything in accordance to your will, you hear us. Therefore, Lord, I bow my knees over these requests. Kneeling on these requests, requests that represent pain, expectations disappointments prayer secret tears many tears repeated tears for some lord i cry unto you the god of heaven may your power rest upon this request and lord i pray that every single request here and those who are connecting online across the globe some hearts bleeding some hearts crying some hearts in desperate expectation for some of you your prayer requests here have time timing to it for some of you if the answers don't come by tomorrow it can affect you i pray and i call upon my god this night may he visit you from america to europe to asia to africa Nigeria here, Abuja, Lagos, Jos, Port Harcourt, Enugu, the Northeast, all the six geopolitical zones, and even here in FCT. In the name of Jesus, may the angels of the Lord be dispatched to all these regions. Taking, taking fearful answers to you. Every human agent who must partner with God for these requests to be granted answers we compel their ministry now and every force of darkness fighting the answers here in the name of jesus we terminate their ministry therefore in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit i decree and declare supernatural answers to these prayers in jesus name i pray in Jesus name I pray Amen. in Jesus name I pray Amen. 
in Jesus name I pray in Jesus name I pray for some of you since you were part of this ministry you have never stood here to testify I decree and declare next week the stage is open for you I say it again next week the stage is open for you some of you may say apostle I'm a shy person it depends on what happened to you may God give you the testimony that you will be too grateful to sit back there in the name of Jesus Christ some of you will not just come here and stand alone it's the whole family that will come and stand because everybody would have received the testimony in Jesus name I pray amen and amen apostle I need Jesus I need him quick I need him now there are people who are saying I came here I was introduced by a friend to come here to koinonia and now I am here I have seen the power of God but I confess that I do not want to go back without Jesus let's minimize movement and just allow a minute or two so that we honor the altar call there are others who are saying apostle I remember giving my heart to the Lord but as it is honestly my life has gone haywire I need restoration to my Christian life now for those who are in this auditorium across the balcony and those outside I'm going to make this call right now very quickly we have a minute for you wherever you are don't be ashamed don't be afraid I want you to leave your seat and come and stand here as I count five you want me to pray with you you want to make it right with Jesus that at the end of your days it will not just be that you came and you prospered and you received I will count one to five there has to be somebody coming to Jesus and you want to rededicate your life join them I'll begin my counting now and all the other other overflows please very quickly you come and stand in front of your projector uh, screens or your LEDs and then um, you receive this prayer are you ready one let's celebrate them as they come two somebody is coming to Jesus the God of all flesh is giving you a new beginning don't be ashamed come to Jesus he will give you a new beginning are you celebrating them please ce celebrate them as they come three apostle I came here I can't say I'm a sinner but I cannot honestly say I'm saved join them you can join them and be sure run like there's fire on the mountain join them and be sure of your salvation right now there is such a thing as the assurance of salvation you can know that you know that you know that you are saved are there still people coming win that war tonight run to Jesus he'll give you a new beginning hallelujah thank you for the courage to come koinonia one more time let's celebrate them hallelujah thank you very much for the courage to step out every time we come to Jesus we are assured of one thing that he will in no wise cast us away lift your right hand high above your head and please say this after me let it be loud and clear from the depth of your heart say Lord Jesus tonight I have seen your power I have heard your word I know you desire to lift me so I come to you just as I am unable to help myself I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I confess that you are my Savior I confess that you are my Lord I confess that you are my King I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i go from glory to glory and grace to grace i'm a child of god amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for these ones you have brought to yourself the bible declares that as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i declare a supernatural miracle upon every one of you right now in the name of Jesus even as you have confessed you are recipients of eternal life you go from glory to glory from grace to grace in Jesus name I pray 
Amen and amen. Thank you for making this bold decision. May I request that you move to my right. There are counselors waving their hands to you. Let's celebrate them as they, come, as they go. God bless you. Thank you very much. Please, all of you, let's celebrate them as they go. They'll have a word with you and then you'll be back to your seat. God bless you. Please, let's celebrate them very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this before we wrap up. I want to encourage everyone, even though I know that we've exhausted this facility inside, outside, everywhere, there are still so many people who need to encounter Jesus Christ, encounter his power, and encounter the, the methodical mentorship that the communication of doctrine brings. There are people who need to grow. There are people who need to meet Jesus. There are people who need empowerment. Let me encourage you. Please make it a point of duty. Everyone who is part of this ministry globally is an evangelist. And you owe a responsibility whether online or offline. Don't say we have exhausted this facility. There are, even if there are 15, 20,000 people, it is still not enough relative to the souls. It's not just about the size of people that show that a man is a great man. For as long as there is one soul out there who is yet to be saved, for as long as there is one soul out there whose life is confused, not knowing the ways of the kingdom, we owe it to do the work of an evangelist. Make it a point of duty that you don't come to church alone. Come with your family members, come with your friends, come with those you do not know. Let them know that Jesus saves. Let them know that Jesus heals. Let them know that there is a home for them where their spiritual understanding can be upgraded, where they can receive the accurate communication of doctrine. Do not neglect the gathering of the saints, but then don't come alone. Let others too come. He said, for this promise is unto you and to your children, as many as are far off. Hallelujah. So let it be part of our kingdom responsibility as responsible people in this ministry to make sure that the work of evangelism in gathering and giving people an opportunity to be mentored, to grow, it is a corporate responsibility of everyone. The Lord will grant us grace. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's rise up as we close. After the grace, I'd like you to greet someone by your left and right on your way out. I decree and declare that your weak beginning is blessed. This grace you have received will start speaking immediately. And you will only return with your testimonies. In the name of Jesus, the Lord preserve you, preserve you spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a profitable week for you. In Jesus' name I pray. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday.